Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be sharing a couple of easy Christmas doodles which you can turn into a Christmas card and it's really open to your own doodle interpretation so let's begin with the first one. For this first one, I'm going to be doodling some Christmas stockings or Christmas socks and I want to hang them under a branch so I just drew out the branch first and then the socks. For the socks, I like to alternate the height and also the size of each of them. I'm only going to draw the top part with pencil and I'll just doodle the rest with my pen later on. But if you're worried about making a mistake, you can also doodle with pencil first, then paint it. The reason why I'm not outlining it first with pencil is because I want to use a brush pen for the outline later so I can play with the different line weights. And my brush pen is unfortunately not waterproof so I can't paint on top of the pen outline which is why I try to limit the pencil outline for now so I don't dirty the page when I paint on it. However, if you have access to a waterproof pen, you can draw first and then outline it with your pen and then erase the pencil and paint on top of the pen later. Here I'm just going to add a few leaves and later on I'm going to paint on some berries for decorations on the branch but you can also do little Christmas ornaments if you would like to. For the colors, this is really open for interpretation since it's just a fun doodle and you can think of it as just coloring and shapes. For me, I use my pencil watercolors but you can also use other mediums as well like gouache, colored pencils and such. I will however mention a little bit of my color mixing for the second painting because it does involve a bit more painting than this one so I'll just mention them later just in case you want to paint along. For the socks, I'm just going to do simple flat colors except for the first one where I made the red and white stripes. But I want this to be simple to do so I'm just sticking to mostly flat colors and that way I can add more doodles with a pen later. It's also a bit harder to guess the color without the outline prior to this but if you've outlined it with pen already, you can play a bit more with the colors. I also like to mention for quick doodles like this, it's easy to work very quickly all around the page. So just be careful with the wet paint if you decide to use watercolors because I've accidentally smudged some colors with my hands a few times before this. Here I decided to add some berries for added color but as I mentioned before you can also add different ornaments to this if you would like to. You can also draw maybe a little squirrel. I think it would look really cute for this design. Once I'm done with the painting stage then I make sure that the surface is completely dry before outlining it so it doesn't get ruined. For the outline, I'm using my Tombow brush pen today which has a hard tip so it's really easy to control the line weight. Like usual, the list of tools will be in the description box just in case you're curious. While outlining the socks, I like to do different markings for texture. You can also do this to indicate the surface if it's thin or more fluffy like the second sock that I'm drawing right now. So just have fun and play around with your doodles. Sorry I didn't include my color mixes for this one because the design is quite simple so I'll just leave it open for you guys if you decide to paint your own. And here I'm just going to continue to outline and doodle on the designs.
I'm done with the outline so I'm going to erase the rest of the pencil marks which are still slightly peaking and I'm going to prep the lines before writing Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays or anything that you want to write. I'm not a hand letterer and it's okay to write with pencil first if you're like me and you're not too confident with writing straight with pen. For this one, I decided to do more of a fun font so it suits the more cartoony design for this card. Here I decided to go over parts of the letters again to get the heavier line weights and I also went back to add some doodles on some of the socks because I didn't really plan the design for this since it's nothing serious so I just doodle with no pressure until I feel like stopping. I also went over some of the lines at the bottom for a heavier line weight and this I thought would indicate a little bit of shadows. I also felt like the flat colored socks looked a bit too heavy so I decided to go back with thick white gouache and amazingly it didn't really smudge the pen which is supposed to be water based ink but I used the thick consistency of the white gouache just to be safe and also for the white to be more opaque on the socks. One last thing that I like to add is to give a border all around the card. I'm doing this freehand because I want the lines to still be a bit crooked so it looks handmade but this is optional. I just find that this gives a better finish to the card. So that's it for the first one. It's just a simple design. You can also add different background textures or more colors if you would like to. Moving on to the second design, I'm going to doodle another type of hanging decorations. I'm drawing out a branch again, but for this one, I'm also going to add a lot of pine leaves to make it a bit more lush when I paint it later. So for the pencil outline, I just left it as empty branches. Again, for this, you can add different decorations you want to hang on the branch. But as for me, I felt like drawing some Christmas baubles. And I'm going to alternate the height as well as the shapes of those bubbles. When drawing out these hanging decorations, including the socks, don't forget to draw the hangers on those decorations to make your doodles look more accurate. Since the strings are not usually attached to the item straight away, but it's actually attached on a hanger on the decorations itself. And a lot of times when people want to draw something simple, they forget about those little features which will give your drawings a better finish. Here I'm adjusting the placement of the bubbles to give a nice random flow. This is why it's very useful to start with pencil first because those positions might be a bit tricky to draw with pen straight away. I always try to get my pencil outline to look as clean as possible so it doesn't distract me when I'm painting and of course after painting on top of the pencil I won't be able to erase it which is why I always try to make the outlines as clean as possible so I don't see a lot of pencil marks underneath the paint. I'm going to begin by painting the berries and the leaves here and I'm going to do this loosely. What I like to do when I paint a bunch of leaves is to have a few tones of greens ready on my palette. So I used yellow, light green, deep green, Prussian blue, and black. This way I can adjust and mix the colors with easier access. For this I like to make the tip of the pine leaves lighter and I use more of the yellowish light green and then as I continue closer to the branch I add the darker cooler greens with a touch of black. As for the berries I used vermilion for the base color and I find that by painting the berries first 
It helps me figure out the placement of the leaves instead of leaving out negative spaces. And of course, after finishing the leaves, I can also go back to fill in some spaces with the berries again when I need to. You'll notice I also have a bit of brown for the branches. I personally like to mix it with some black so the brown isn't overly vibrant for the branch. Once I've placed quite a bit of the pine leaves, I want to introduce a different leaf shape and I'm also going to use a different tone of green. For this pencil set, this green is called emerald green, but in my whole bind set this would be similar to a cobalt green. I know some of you get confused over names of the colors sometimes, but hopefully it's visible to see from the video because different brands usually have different names if they don't use real pigments, so it's always better to see what the finished color mixture looks like. For some of the longer hangers, I find that the lines are a bit too empty so I decided to place some hanging pine leaves on it and I think it looks cuter that way. And after that I'm going to color in the bubbles. I'm going to keep the design fairly simple and I'm just going to use a set of colors for them. The main colors I'm going to use are green and gold with the additional red and purple as a couple of accents for the round bubbles. For the green, I decided to use emerald green so it has a slightly cooler tone with a darker green which I made from a mix of deep green, Prussian blue, and black. As for the gold, I used yellow ochre for the base color with some muted browns for the shadows later on. Feel free to play around with the design of the bubbles. You can doodle anything on them. These are just the designs I had in mind, but you can customize yours and play with the colors as well. For the rounder bubbles, I used a very thick consistency paint because I want the richness of the colors to show through and for a slight shine, I took off the excess paint using a clean damp brush on the side to give it more of a three-dimensional form as highlight. You can always go back in with white gouache or with white pen to draw on more intricate designs on top of the darker backgrounds like what I'm doing here. Then after I'm done with the painting part, 
I'm ready to draw the outline using my brush pen again and for this I'm still going to add additional doodles and details on top of the outline with my brush pen. For the leaves, I decided to outline some of the leaves only and also the berries to give it a bit more definition, but I'm leaving out the pine leaves because I think it will look overly busy with additional outline. Like before, I lined the area for my writing as guide, then I write Merry Christmas with pencil first, and then outline it with my brush pen, then I erase the pencil marks once the ink is completely dry. As a finishing touch, you can also give a little bit of border around the cards. I decided to add this because I find that the edges just look a bit too empty for me, but of course this is optional. And this is the second one done. So those are the completed doodles. These are simple and quick Christmas card ideas you can make. Like usual, all of the list of tools I used for the video as well as my social media links will be listed in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!